<laughs> it's pretty close. <laughs> Chocolate, chocolate button. Yes. What are you doing? Are you are you painting something? Well, I'm painting, but I'm not really painting anything in particular. I'm just painting splodges. Oh, do you not want to feel like you should be a bit more careful than you're being? No, no, no. I like just scribbling with the paintbrush. It's really fun. I like exploring all the different colours and what I can do with a paintbrush. Oh, okay. Let's see how you get on. Do you not want to use any more different colours this time? Nope. I do not. I just want to keep going with orange right now. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to do some splodges in a different colour. Are you sure you don't want to do a proper picture and don't just do scribbles and, and splodges? You could do really nice brush strokes. Nope, I definitely want to do scribbles and splodges. Okay, chocolate, chocolate button, it's your painting. Spring is here, spring is here, how do you think I know? I just saw a blue tit, that is how I know. I tell you what, chocolate, chocolate button, yes, why don't you let me cut out your picture so that I can turn it into a shape so that it looks like something else? When you finish doing your splodges? Um, yes, okay, yes, that would be really nice. What, so you're going to cut it into a shape and make it look like I was painting a picture all along? Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Okay, then yes, deal. It's a deal, let's shake. Okay, fantastic. I'm going to keep going with my painting. Wow, you've made my splodges into a beautiful butterfly. Please, can I send that to someone? Maybe I could send it to Mummy. That would be so good. I'd love to send that to my mum. I think she'd be really happy with it, that I've painted her a butterfly. I think she'd be really happy too, Chocolate Chocolate Button. That's a really good idea. OK, let's pop it in the post. But first, we have got to get ready for phonics. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Right, let's go. Chocolate Chocolate Button? Yes? We've had a special question for you from a, a lovely girl in our class called Ruby. And she has asked a question which is, can you floss? Oh, I'm not sure if I can floss. I'll happily give it a go. Well, that's all, we're, all she's asking. She'd just like to show you to show her your floss. Is that all right? Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll try my best. OK, are you ready? Three, two, one. Chocolate, chocolate button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, are you sure? I'm not sure. Just try again for me. <laughs> well,
well, do you know what, Chocolate Chocolate Button? I can see you're trying really, really hard to do a floss, and it's not an easy task when you've got such little arms and not really any hips to speak of. So I can see it looks, it looks a little bit more like a sort of samba, I guess, or maybe a cha-cha-cha or something. I think someone's been watching too much Strictly Come Dancing. Da, cha, cha, da, 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 da. Hmm. Well, well done for trying anyway, Chocolate Chocolate Button. Thank you. I was doing my best and that's all that matters. Perhaps Ruby could teach me how to do it properly when I next see her. I would love that. Ooh, well, let's ask her and see if she says yes, OK? Right. Ooh, speaking of lessons, let's get on with our phonics one. OK, yes, good, let's go. Hello and welcome to day 10 of Chocolate Chocolate Button Teaches Phonics. I cannot believe we've made it to day 10 already, my goodness me. Thank you so much for all your fantastic zigzag books. I've absolutely loved looking through them and reading them. It's been really great seeing your writing get so much better and so many of you have remembered to use capital letters at the beginning of a sentence and full stops at the end of a sentence and even remembered your finger spaces. Elbow bump, elbow bump. Right, let's get on with some handwriting. Or should I say, pause writing. <laughs> handwriting practice. So see if you can get your whiteboard and your whiteboard pen or your pencil and your paper ready by the time I get to zero. Ready, ten, nine, a eight, a seven, a six, a five, a four, a three, a two, a one, and a zero. Head, shoulders, beans on toast, beans on toast. Head, shoulders, beans on toast, beans on toast. And eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, beans on toast, beans on toast. Chocolate, chocolate button. What are you up to? I thought we were going to do our handwriting now. Oh, we are, but our first handwriting activity is to increase our muscles in our shoulders. So I was just reminding myself of where my shoulders are. I see. Okay, well, what do you want us to do? The first thing you have to do is put your hands on either side of the chair that you're sitting on and push really, really hard with your arms straight so that your bottom comes off the chair. I'm afraid I can't demonstrate because I don't have a chair. But push really hard and so that you come up off the chair and then see how many times you can do it. Maybe you can do it 10 times, maybe you can do it 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, or 0 times. Have a go and see if you can push yourself up. Then, if you're finding it too easy, see if you can hold yourself there for two or three or maybe even five seconds before you let yourself down again. That's it. And if you're finding even that easy, see if you can lift your feet off at the same time as your bottom so that your arms are holding all of your weight. Are you doing it? Well done if you are. Don't worry if you're not. I know probably some, some of the chairs might not be quite right. It might not work very well on some chairs. But have a go and see how you get on. You could even do it on the floor probably. You could just uh, squat down and see if you can put your weight onto your hands. Okay. Lucy, I'm going to need your pause for the next one. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a lazy eight using our right hand first. So you're going to draw an eight just with your finger on its side. That's it. So the eight's on its side, sorry, not your finger. That's it. So you make an eight. And just make sure that the eight is big enough to cross your body as you do it. That's it. And then you're going to try it with your left hand. Where's my left hand? 
I'm going to find this harder if I go in F10. There we go. So make sure your left hand is also going across your body. That's it. Nice work, everyone. And that is making your left side of your brain and your right side of your brain all link up so you're ready to do your handwriting. Fantastic. Okay, on to the next activity. So you're going to reach your hands out as if you're going to open a door handle, a doorknob. And so you've got your fingers all closed like that and then your thumb open. So it's almost like you're going to make a heart look if you put them together like that. So you're going to hold them like that and then you're just going to twist your wrists. Okay, these are your wrists here. And you're just going to twist. Let's twist again like we did last summer. Ooh, let's twist again like we did last year. There we go. Twisty, twisty, twisty. And that's going to build up the muscles in your wrists so that writing gets easier and easier. Okay, there we go. The next one is you're going to just walk your finger up the pen or your pencil as if it is a caterpillar. And try the next one. And your thumb. And then try with the other hand, index finger. That's it. That finger. And then your thumb. Okay, fantastic. We're just going to do some quick big hands, little hands, big hands, little hands. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And shake them out. And then the other way up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And shake them out. Brilliant. Do your hands feel all warm? Thumbs up if they do. Hurrah. Right, let's get going with our handwriting. Right, if you hold your pen in this hand, your left hand, then you are going to take these three fingers, put them over the inky bit, and then flip it. If you hold your pen in your right hand, you're going to take these three fingers, put them over the inky bit, and flip it. Okay, let's get going with our first warm-up activity. We're going to start by drawing some triangles. And then we're going to draw some battlements, just like we did yesterday with Mr. Dusek. Along, up, along, down, along, up, along, down, along, up, along, down, along, up, along, down, along, up, along. Okay, and now let's try some circles. Fantastic. And now some rectangles. Two sides longer than the other two. Oh yeah, I'm a rectangle. There we go. On to the next one. Our spelling pattern today to practice is the letter C. So we're going to pretend that there is a line. You could even draw one. There you go. And then we're going to start on the line and then we're going to go forwards and then backwards. Let me show you. So start on the line and we're going to go forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards, forwards. And backwards. Okay? 
So it looks like lots of waves, I suppose, eventually. Let's just do another line. Forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards. If you want to have a go with your finger first, that can often really helps. So get your finger and you can go forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards like that. Or with your left hand, forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards. OK, let's give it a go with the full board. Here's my picture of some pirates. Look, there's the skull and cross crossbones. Here's the Jolly Roger. And there's a man having to walk the plank. There's a pirate with a parrot on his shoulder. And here's a big sea monster. And it says, walk, walk the plank. Walk the plank. But remember, you can make any drawing you like out of your handwriting practice. OK. Let's move on to doing our sounds. See if you can say the sound before I do. Let's go. Oo, or, uh. Oo. A. Or k oi or f Your or or g x n z e Ear. A. Er. Uh, I. Z. You. I t qu uh ow p w 
I. O. A. E. G A O S P Y O E at the end of a word. N. B. V. A. U. O. R. Ow. E. Oi. J. Jelly and jam, jelly and jam, jiggling on a plate. That was the last one. We are going to have a game of snap now with our frequent words. So, please can you at home be on my team and we'll all play against Lucy and see if we can beat her. Ha ha ha. The rules of the game are that we put down cards and if the two words match, e.g. they are the same, then you shout snap okay as loud as you can and then the first person to shout snap wins all of the cards in the pile the winner is the person who wins all of the cards okay let's have a go the word in the middle is the word so when you see the same word you shout snap let's go was so no when there snap it's snap lucy look the two words are the same so and so oh yes chocolate button you're quite right okay all of these words can go in your pile. Wowee, that's loads. Okay, let's put this one under there as well and see what is the next word in the pile. Okay, the next round is the word in the middle is B. So let's see, get ready everyone. Right, let's go. We me. No, that's not the same one. B. Hang on a second. That's snap. Lucy, look. B and B. Oh my goodness, you're right, chocolate chocolate button. B and B. You are so fast at this game. My goodness me. You're getting more added to your pile. My goodness, let's see what the next word is going to be. You guys and Chocolate Chocolate Button are winning. You're such a good team. My goodness me. Right, I'm going to see if I can get 
really, really good at this game in the next round. So our first word in the middle is the word some. Some. Right. Okay, let's go. She. He. Do. Were. Oh, no. All. All. Are. Come. Snap. Oh. Ah, oh, no, it's not snap. Look, because this one's some and this one's come. Oh, whoops. Silly Lucy. Right, let's see the next one. Some. Snap! It's snap. Look, this time it is right. Some and some. Oh my goodness, you're right. Dear me, I am not doing very well today. You guys are so good at this game. Right, let's see. Put that. Your pile is getting so big, I can almost not see you over the top, chocolate, chocolate button. Right, let's see what the next word is for the middle. The next word is said. Said. So let's see who can see said first. What? My? You? They? Said. <gasps> Snap! Oh yes, I finally got it right. Look, said and said. What was that? You said snap at home before I did. Oh my goodness. So I have to give these cards the chocolate chocolate button. Oh my goodness. Okay, well in that case, you and chocolate chocolate button have won the whole game because there are no cards left. So you have all the cards in your pile. Well done everyone, that was a really, really good game. Well done and thank you everyone. I nearly lost at the last minute, but you managed to get it back for me. Fantastic, thank you for shouting out snap. I didn't even notice, I lost concentration for a minute there. Whoopsie daisy. Hang on a second, maybe you would like to make your own cards with your own words on it and play snap at home. It's really simple and you could definitely teach your brothers and sisters or your mums and dads to have a go with you and play the game as well. How about that? That would be really fun. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, let's move on to our next activity. Our next job is we are going to play match the sentence to the picture. Let's go with our first sentence. The, the, b, r, a, sh, brush, the, brush, g, ot, got, st, st, a, uh, stuck, 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 the, brush, got, stuck, in, the, t, h, e, spells the, in, the, the brush got stuck in the k o ow cl clown clown clowns clowns the brush got stuck in the clowns r e d red red k er k er o curl Y at the end of a word makes an E sound, so curly, curly, oh, curly. The brush got stuck in the clown's red curly hair, hair. The brush got stuck in the clown's curly hair.
Oh, red curly hair. Right, which picture then? Hmm. There's an oak tree. Clown. Crab. And a frog. Hmm. Which picture? The brush got stuck in the clown's red curly hair. Oh, it's the clown. It's the clown. Look, over there. That's what it goes with. You're absolutely right, chocolate chocolate button. Well done. Here we go. Let's put the clown with our sentence. The brush got stuck in the clown's red curly hair. <laughs> Silly clown. I would have liked to have seen him with a hairbrush stuck in his hair. That would be very funny. <laughs> okay, let's go on to the next sentence. Okay, here's the next sentence. T-H-E spell the, the, f -r -f -og. frog, the frog, j -a -m. J -a -m. jump, jumps, jumps, the frog jumps in the p -o pond the frog jumps in the pond and sw sw -i -m swims swims off the frog jumps in the pond and swims off is that what you got as well yes that's what i got is that what you got at home it is fantastic okay that must be right then the frog jumps in the pond and swims off Hmm, let's see the pictures. There's the oak tree. Oh look, there's someone swimming. It must be that picture. Keep go keep looking, chocolate chocolate button. Just check. Just check that you're right. Look at all the pictures. Crab. No, this sentence is not about crabs. And the frog. Yep, I think it must be the swimming. Hmm. Are you sure? Let me read it to you again. The frog jumps in the pond and swims off. What's this sentence about? What's the subject of this sentence? Oh, it's about the frog. So it must be the picture of the frog. Am I right now? Yes, that's it, chocolate chocolate button. That's it. So we put the picture of the frog with the sentence. You're right that it is also about swimming, but the main part of the sentence, the object of the sentence, or the subject of the sentence, is the frog. So therefore that's why we've chosen to put the picture of the frog there and not the swimming. Okay, fantastic, excellent, nice work chocolate chocolate button. I like how you found that hard but you carried on anyway, that's really really good learning. Oh thanks Lucy, you're very welcome. I like seeing it when you when you don't find it too easy all the time but you keep trying your hardest even though you didn't get it right first time. It's really good, nice work. Okay, let's move on. Okay, let's read our last sentence and see which picture goes with this one. Let's see. I is just a capital I. Don't let it trick you. I k -a -m can I can ear ear hear oh I can hear the oh oh did you see the billy goat oh 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 I can hear the oak oaks oaks I can hear the oaks Tw, tw, twig, twigs, twigs. I can hear the oaks twigs. S, n, snap, snap, snap. P, i, n, ping, snap, ping, snapping, snapping, snapping. Snapping. I can hear the oaks twigs snapping in the w -i -n. wind. Wind. 
I can hear the oak's twigs snapping in the wind. Hmm, let's see which picture will go with this one. I can see the oak's twigs snapping in the wind. Hmm. Now, there's a picture of a tree and a frog, a crab and some swimming, a person swimming. Oh, what's an oak? Hmm, I can't remember. Ooh, um, can you tell me at home what an oak is? Is it a car? No. Uh, is it a type of sheep, maybe? An oak sheep? No? Oh, um, is it, what was that? Oh, it's a tree. Oh, right. Oh, okay. In that case, it must be that one. I can hear the oaks, twigs snapping in the wind. Oh my goodness me. Oh yes, that's right. An oak tree is the one that makes acorns, isn't it? I remember now. Oh yes, there we go. An oak tree. Fantastic. Wow, we've done all of our sentences for today. So let's move on to some spelling. Get your whiteboard and your whiteboard pen or your pencil and your paper ready now. Let's go. Okay, are you ready for our spellings? Okay, the first one is the word was. Was. We've been doing this quite a lot this week. And Miss Hartill recommended that we say it w as as a way of helping to remember you to spell it. W as. That might help you. But I'm pretty sure most of you will remember how to spell was. So that's our first one. Number one, please write the word was. Was. The next word, spelling number two, is the word you. You, 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 you. Don't let it trick you. You. And the next word is the word pond. It's got four sounds in it. P, O, N, D. Pond. P, O, N, D. Pond. We just saw it written down, I think. The frog jumped into a pond and swam away. Pond. I miss our times pond dipping in our pond in the garden. I can't wait to go back there soon with you all. The next one is desk. Desk. D, e, s, k. Desk. D, e, s, k. Desk. A desk is a table that you do your work on. Desk. Just be careful about which one of these you choose. That one makes a b sound and that one makes a d sound. So just be careful you've chosen the right one. Desk. Number five is the word grab. Grab. G, r, a, b, grab. G, r, a, b, grab. So this time we're looking for the b sound, not the d 
sound. Grab. Grab means that you snatch it off someone or you take it very quickly. Often the other person doesn't want you to take it, you just grab it. Okay? Grab. The next one is slug. <laughs> slug. S-l-a-g. Slug. Slug. S-l-a-g. Slug. Slug. A slug is a snail without the shell. Slug. They move very slowly and they are often a little bit slimy. And we often find them when we're in the garden and we turn over a log, there's often a slug there. Slug. Birds love eating slugs. And slugs love eating our lettuces and our plants that we're growing. Oh my goodness, the next one is snail. Snail. S-n-a-l. Snail. Snail. Just be careful with the A spelling in this one because it's not that one by itself. It's the A sound which is made with an A and an I. So it's S, N, and then the letters A and I to make the A sound, and then the U. So it's five letters, four sounds. S, N, A, U, snail. And we know that a snail is a slug with its house on its back in the form of a shell. Snail. Number eight is plum. Plum. P -l -a -m. P-L-U-M. Plum. 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 A plum is a type of fruit. They're delicious and sweet and juicy. They look a little bit like a purple tomato, I suppose. But inside there are not lots of little seeds. There's a big stone. Yummy, 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 yummy. Delicious. Plum. And number nine is the word stop. 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 The next one is stick. 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 There are four sounds in this word, and again there are five letters because the k, the last k sound, is made with the c k spelling. K stick. Stick. And a stick can be something that we find on the floor, which has come off a tree, and we use it to do, dig in the mud or poke things. 
And we might play poo sticks with it. That's a really fun game. And it's also a verb because it means you're going to put two things together. You might stick two pieces of paper together. Stick. So they won't come undone. Stick. Oh, you'll like the next one. The next one is flock. Flock. F -l -o -k. Flock. 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 Now the word flock can be used to describe a group of either sheep, flock of sheep, or of your favourite birds. So you might say there's a flock of birds flying overhead, which means there's more than one bird flying over us at the moment. Flock. Flock. The next one is flash. L -a -sh, flash, flash, ah. Flash means that you do something really, really quickly, like you might tidy up in a flash, which means it was really, really quick. Or it might mean that there was a bright spark of light suddenly, a flash. So you might turn your torch on and then turn it off really quickly and that would be a flash of light. Fantastic. Flash. And the last spelling for today is the word crash. <laughs> crash. 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 <laughs> Don't forget that second sound because it's quite a tricky one to hear. Crash. Crash. Because if you don't have the er in it, it just spells the word cash, which we, as we've been through earlier on, on in the week, means money. So we want the word crash. There was a crash. Two things bumped into each other and they had a crash. Crash. And for a bonus one, number 14 can be your bonus one, and it is the word said. Ooh, have you remembered how to spell that? Said. Right. Let's see how you got on. Have a look and give yourself a tick for the ones you got right. And don't worry about the ones you got wrong. We're all trying our hardest and that's the most important thing. Okay, let's go. I'm so excited because it's time for shared reading, my favourite part of phonics. Woohoo! And today's book is not about a bear, but it is about a tiger. And this tiger has temper tantrums. 
So this tiger has a big strop and he gets very, very cross. And it's one of our class's favourite books. So let's have a look and have a go. Tiger and the tem temp uh, temper t a n tan t r tr tantra um tantrum tiger and the temper tantrum tiger and the temper tantrum oh look he's crying but and he looks oh he doesn't look very happy look how his mouth is upturned like that uh oh and this is by Vivian French and Rebecca Elgar, and it's been published by Kingfisher. So thank you for letting us share this book with everyone in the class again. Okay, here we go. Yeah, he is Tiger and the Temper Tantrum. Tiger and the Temper Tantrum by Vivian French and Rebecca Elgar. Kingfisher. Kingfisher is a type of bird. You should have a look. They're really beautiful. Lots of publishers have names of birds on them. Oh, look. And it says, for Ruby. Ha! Huh. Can you see? For Ruby. I wonder if that's for Ruby in our class. It can't be. I'm surely she never has temper tantrums. Let's see. Eat, eat up, tiger, said Mother Tiger. No, said Tiger. I don't like egg. Uh-oh. I want to go to the park and climb to the top, top of the climbing frame. Hmm. Uh-oh, he's saying, I want. He's not saying, please, can I? He's saying, I want to go to the park. And no! Uh-oh, I'm a bit worried about Tiger. We'll go to the park after we've been to the shop, said Mother Tiger. There's that said, said, S-A-I-D, said, said Mother Tiger. So, Mother Tiger is telling him we can go to the park, but we're going to do it after we've been to the shops. Sounds reasonable enough to me. Now, let's see, where's... Oh, that must be Mummy Tiger reading her newspaper. And then there's Tiger. He says he doesn't like his egg. bird in the tree. And there they are. Off they go. Sh op shop. Oh yes, they said they were going to go to the shops, didn't they? Okay, let's see what happens next. Hurry up, tiger, said Mother Tiger. She wrapped him in his scarf. Do you want to ride in your buggy? No, said tiger. I want to walk. I want to walk to the park and climb to the top of the climbing frame. Oh dear. Is he saying please? No, he isn't. Oh dear. In the shop, shop, in the shop, Tiger picked up a big bag of sweeties. Put those back, Tiger, said Mother Tiger. Oh, look, there's put, 
We learned that the other day, didn't we? Put. Mm, what do you think Tiger's going to say? Mm, no, said Tiger. I want Sweeties to eat when I go to the park and climb to the top of the climbing frame. Mother Tiger put the Sweeties back. Why do you think she's putting the sweeties back? Hmm. Do you think she do you think Tiger's asked nicely for the sweeties? No. And do you think he's followed his mother's instructions yet? No, he hasn't, has he? Oh dear. Oh dear. Outside the shop, Tiger threw his scarf on the ground. Oh my goodness. Tiger, said Mother Tiger, pick your scarf up. What do you think Tiger says? <laughs> You're right. No! Tiger growled. I won't. I want to go to the park. I want to climb to the top of the climbing frame. And I want to go now. And he rolled on the floor, waving his paws. Oh, there he is, rolling on the floor. Oh. Mother Tiger looked at Tiger. Look, his eyes are closed. He's scrunching up his face. Oh, dear. Mother Tiger roared such a loud roar that Tiger <gasps> jumped. No, said Mother Tiger. We're not going to the park. We're going home. And we're going home this minute. Tiger stared. Oh dear, he's done it this time, hasn't he? He's been tr trying her patience all morning, saying no every single time, and I want, and never saying please, and now he's having a tantrum. She's cross, which is fair enough, really, isn't it? Let's see what's happening next. Tiger burst into tears. Mother Tiger plopped him into his buggy. Tiger cried louder. Do it with me. <laughs> oh dear. How do you think Tiger's feeling now? Oh, gosh. Mother wa Tiger walked faster. So Tiger cried louder, and the louder he cries, the faster Mother Tiger walks home. So is the tiger having a tantrum and screaming and shouting and crying? Is it helping him get what he wants? It's not, is it? No. So having a tantrum actually doesn't make your mummy do what you want them to do. No. Hmm, let's see what happens next. Hello, Tiger, said a voice. Tiger stopped crying. I'm going to the park, said Crocodile. Tiger sniffed loudly. <laughs> Hi, Tiger, said Hippo, He, as he skipped by. I'm off to the park. <laughs> it's not fair, T 
tiger wailed. Is it fair, though? Do you think it's not fair? Hmm, it's interesting, because I think it kind of is fair, because Tiger hasn't said please, Tiger hasn't followed instructions, he didn't eat his egg when he was asked to, he didn't pick up his scarf when he was asked to, he in fact threw down his scarf. He's just said, I want, I want, and screamed and shouted all morning. So do you think it's fair that he should get to go and have fun with his friends in the park, like Crocodile and Hippo? No, I don't think it is fair. Tiger says, Everyone's going to the park except me! <laughs> hmm, well I wonder who you think, whose fault do you think that is? Do you think that's Tiger's fault or do you think that's Tiger's mummy's fault? Hmm, there's, there's Crocodile and Hippo going off with their mummies off to the park. And where's Tiger going, having a tantrum? Yep, that's right, he's going home. Look, mummy Tiger looks like she's smiling. And Tiger does in this one, I wonder what's going to happen. Mother Tiger stopped. Tiger, she said. Maybe Crocodile and Hippo don't have temper tantrums. Maybe Crocodile and Hippo are good little animals. And good little animals go to the park. Hmm. Tiger thought very hard. Hmm. 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 Do good little tigers go to the park? He asked. Yes, said Mother Tiger. Going to the park with good little tigers is fun. Oh, said Tiger, and he wiped his eyes with his tail. He smoothed his fur with his claws, and he smiled a huge smile. I'm a very good tiger now, he said. A very good tiger. Look, it's even in capital letters, so we know he's saying a very good tiger. Very clearly and loudly so his mummy can hear. Look at his big smile. Oh yes, I'd like to spend some time with this tiger. This tiger looks like he's lots of fun to play with. I didn't want to spend time with the tiger who was screaming and shouting and crying, having a tam temper tantrum. I didn't want to spend time with him, but I, I want to spend time with that tiger. He looks really fun to play with. And he was all the way to the top of the climbing frame. There we go. Look, there's his football. There he is climbing to the top of the climbing frame. And there are his friends, Hippo and Crocodile. And look, everyone is happy, no one's sad, because everyone is being good and smiling and saying, yes, mummy. None of them are having temper tantrums. None of them are saying, ow, <coughs> none of that, because they're big boys and girls now, aren't they? So we don't have temper tantrums now, we're big. Fantastic. Oh, it looks like they're having such a good time. I can't wait till we can all be in the playground again, having lots and lots of fun. That's going to be really, really good. Let's see what happens in the last page. <laughs> it just says, y -i -p -y -p -p -e -p yippee, 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 yippee. Can you say, yippee?
<laughs> yes, that's it. Yippee, yippee, yippee. Look, and there's Tiger looking very happy to be such a good tiger. My goodness me, that was really, really good. Let's see the end. The end. Fantastic. Well, that is a really good book. It's one of our absolute favourites, isn't it, that one? So I guess what we can learn from this is that temper tantrums don't help us to get what we want. And saying no, 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 it doesn't help us get what we want either. If we want something, we have to say yes. And we have to be kind and nice and help our mummies and daddies around the house or around the flat, all around our homes. And if they ask us to do something, we say yes. We don't say no. That's it. Perhaps you would like to draw a picture of the tiger having a tantrum in your reading journal. Or perhaps you'd like to draw a picture of the happy tiger having a lovely time doing what he wants when he's behaving and being good and following his instructions in your reading journal. I'd love to see either of those pictures. You could even write down some sentences saying what you would like. For example, you could say, please can I have fish fingers for tea? Or you might say, please can I go on the trampoline? Or please can I do a jigsaw puzzle? Okay, so you could write down a list of things, but don't forget to say please. And don't forget that you won't be able to do everything you want to do straight away. Sometimes we have to wait, we have to follow instructions and listen. So fantastic. Oh, I can't wait to see you for some more phonics very, very soon. Until then, bye and elbow bump and goodbye. And <laughs>